everybody, welcome to The Rundown with Ramon. Thanks for being here today. Today, we're going to have another exciting discussion. That's all I bring are exciting discussions on The Rundown with Ramon. Darlene, thanks for being here today, Darlene. I appreciate the work that you and your team do at Wells Fargo and making an impact, my words, in the community. So, Darlene, can you just give us your full name and title, a little bit unpack about what you do today? And then we'll dive into some a report and some things that you and your team are working on, which I know are going to help in impacting small businesses. But give us your full name and your official title, please. Sure. Thanks, Ramon, for having me. I'm Darlene Goins. I am the head of philanthropy and community impact here at Wells Fargo, and I also serve as the president of the Wells Fargo Foundation. And it. with the Wells Fargo Foundation, we focus on strengthening historically marginalized communities by investing in economic advancement um, and building generational wealth. I love that. So is it fair to say that people either behind your back or in front of you call you the lady who has the funnest job at Wells Fargo? You just to get out there and say, oh, needs, 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 fun, fun, fun. Is that the essence of what you wake up in the morning every day or is not that simple? Or am I on the right track? Um, I feel very blessed to sit in this seat because I can have a tremendous impact on yes. communities. Um, and I've got a great team of people that help um, really drive social impact um, throughout the country. Yes, you do. Well, offline, you, we can we can go into the how I would say what the role is like. Um, uh, Darlene, let's talk about the Open for Business Fund. I know this is an important arm, important part of what Wells Fargo is doing for communities, and I think beyond even small businesses. But can you just start right there and help us understand what that has been, what that is, and maybe even where it's going, if that's an appropriate question as well. But let's start right there. I think that's a cornerstone of today's discussion. Sure, absolutely. So, like, let's think back to 2020, pandemic hits, all of a sudden, millions of small businesses, many of whom we really think about in terms of our communities and help make communities home, you know, hair salons, nail salons, restaurants, childcare centers, they immediately struggled. Mm -hmm. And so we looked at what we could do around a national inclusive strategy to support small businesses. And we started by listening. We talked to community organizations, asked them, what do you need to help support small businesses navigate this pandemic? And they said they needed flexible capital. Hmm. And so that's what we did. We created the Open for Business Fund, roughly $420 million that we distributed. Yes. <laughs> that we saw my face, right? I went, okay. I know, like, exactly. Yes. Four, <laughs> quite a bit of money. $420 million we distributed yeah. to CDFI, so Community mm -hmm. Development Financial Institutions and other community organizations to support small businesses. And now fast forward four years, they've told us they were able to support over 336,000 small businesses and help those small businesses create or preserve more than 461,000 jobs. That's a lot. And those are numbers you can track back. And one thing, Darlene, I want to go back a bit. Can you just help those listening understand, I think I would call it a grant. I think it is, but you correct me in the wording in a minute, but grant, mm -hmm. things like that through what the Wells Fargo Foundation, what that fund does versus traditional banking instruments. Can we just, and I should have asked you that first, just for those who may not understand it. Wells Fargo, we hear the word foundation. You're, you're, you're donating contributing, gifting, as it were, money to small businesses through organizations. Got that, which I think is no payment back needed, but you'll correct me in a minute, versus though going into my Wells Fargo branch, I need a loan to start my new pizza shop for 20000 or 10000 Just at the top, help me understand those two differences. Correct. So within the Philanthropy and Community Impact Team, which includes the foundation, we donate funds, so philanthropic funds, to nonprofit organizations and CDFIs so that they can in turn provide services to the community. So for some, in some cases, those services might be grants that they're making to small businesses. They may be lower no cost loans, no collateral loans. They also provide technical assistance, which is um, personalized guidance and, and expertise. So maybe helping small businesses figure out how can I apply for federal and state programs? Or how can I pivot during the pandemic from providing in-person services to virtual services? So we provide those funds to the organizations and then they deliver services as well as capital to the community. Yeah, got it. So what I'm hearing is that, yes, business owners can still go to their traditional bank and their traditional instruments that we've covered on Zone of Genius. But in this case, there are found eight, there are nonprofits that are in our communities whose mission is to help small businesses in different ways, whether free or low cost, a variety of ways. Wells Fargo is empowering them 
to empower their communities. Is that, am I repeating what I'm exactly. hearing? Exactly. Okay, got it. Yes, exactly. It's so important that we not only provide services to our customers, but really help strengthen the overall ecosystem for small businesses, because particularly underserved small businesses, um, they could benefit from stronger networks, getting access to capital in different ways. It's important to be able to meet businesses where they are. Some might need micro loans, mm -hmm. right? Because they're just starting out. So it's important for us to support the entire ecosystem so that we can strengthen the small business community. Sure. And any comment, again, Darlene, thanks for your time today. Comment on the pandemic is over, hopefully, yep. between my mouth and God's ears. And I'm sure you was the same. It doesn't never comes back, but there could be other things that happen. This is life, right? Things happen. But what are your thoughts on what you've observed from that dark time, from that time of change, which actually did birth many new startups, I must say, even though it's a, you know, it's a negative happening, it still did change brings interesting things, my point being. But from from then and to now, Darlene, what has you and your team seen? What has Wells Fargo seen? Just any stats, any data, any any uh, introspection of how small businesses are faring today versus that how that evolution has been? Well, we were really excited to see that with the Open for Business Fund, investing in historically underserved or underestimated mm -hmm. businesses did lead like to the creation and preservation of jobs. Mm -hmm. And the most in need businesses were served. So 53% of those businesses were women owned businesses, 79% were racially and ethnically diverse and 72% um, identified as low and moderate income. So we were happy to see that the most in need businesses were served and that they lead to jobs. We really mm -hmm. helped bust myths that investing in lower income business owners doesn't create jobs. It actually does. And it helps fuel local economies. And then I think the other thing that happened was a lot of the organizations that we invested in through the Open for Business Fund created new products and increased their capacity to serve small businesses that still exist today. So Many of the small businesses that are out there today, many that were created during the pandemic, as you as you noted, can still access these resources. Mm -hmm. They can still go get that personalized expertise and guidance to help their businesses. Yeah, I think I'm going to buy the domain. I don't know if it's free, like banking for good. I think sometimes, sometimes the banking industry gets a bad rap. But I think that, and again, I, I love the banking industry for sure. I'm talking to you. But for those listening, I think this is a clear example I'm happy to shine the light of banking for good, even if it wasn't there. But, you know, banking for good, I think it's a good example that how you mentioned two things, and I feel free to speak more about it, is A, when you invest in a small business owner, especially broadly underserved, I'll use that broad word, uh, that jobs are created. That's one. It's not just mm -hmm. Ramon, right, making T-shirts, could be, but it's Ramon hiring three others, four others, 70 others, and building that. And then two, I like that you said about the products and services. I'm I'm doing an app or, or a table or this chair behind me, whatever it was, I'm creating new products and services that also, I guess, Darlene, help the supply chain in some way that there's other people you may not even know are helped because of what I'm doing. Can you just talk to that, uh, that bit, anything in there that I said that you want to respond to, please? Exactly. And when we thought about the Open for Business Fund, we knew that the organizations in which we invested would be able to leverage the money for um the greater good in the community, but they were actually able to leverage the money to strengthen their balance sheet and attract mm -hmm. other public and private investment. So that 420 million grew to $2.1 billion. That was then, <laughs> yes, exactly. That leverage was so important so that they could do things like expand their credit box and be able to accept more businesses that maybe historically might have been declined for a lending product. Mm -hmm. So it was really exciting to see the um, overall impact that we were able to have with the Open for Business Fund. I love that. One or two more questions, Arlene. Anything I didn't ask you, please let me know. And hopefully uh, I can, I'll can. i give you back your time. So you'll say, Ramon wants to have me again? I'd love to. I find that helps with executives. When I give them back some time, they say yes to me again. <laughs> um, well, any tips or advice, Darlene, for small businesses, whatever it may be? You know, you, you and your team, metaphorically, talk to millions of small businesses or tens of thousands, whatever the number. You see things, you read reports. I'm sure you have conversations. What have you seen? What do you say to Becky, who's trying to launch her first business? What do you say to George and, and his two dogs in a garage who's trying to get his... I don't know, is knife carving business up. Oh, what's your <laughs> advice for these small businesses as they're starting? And then maybe, Darlene, if you can, talk to those who've been in business for a bit and growing. So maybe two sure. advices for those just starting out and those that are growing and have been in business for a while. 
Sure. So I would say definitely tap into the small business ecosystem of support. Mm -hmm. There are often local community organizations, your local urban league. Um, so tap into that network and get advice on how to go about starting your business and mm -hmm. understanding how you can forecast cash flows and put together a business plan and think about um, the different types of capital that might be available to start your business. Um, I would say definitely seek out that personalized technical expertise. So with the Open for Business Fund, the organizations we supported were able to provide 1.1 million hours of technical expertise. And more than half of that was in a one-on-one -on -one format. So if you can tap into an organization that can provide that technical assistance, they can really give you that personalized support that you need to be successful. And then look for affordable capital. I mentioned CDFIs. Um, there are a lot of different programs out there, grants, low and no cost loans, no collateral loans. Um, it's tempting to self-fund your small business or go to family or friends, but there's a lot of different forms of capital out there. So look for affordable capital. And then I think for the businesses that have been around for a while, really look at asset ownership. In mm -hmm. fact, the third round of the Open for Business Fund is still ongoing and it's focused on asset ownership. So thinking about things like um, investing in commercial property, investing in equipment or technology infrastructure that can really help sustain your business and help you scale and grow. I think I'm gonna call you Mrs. Small Business. I may change your title. I'm gonna talk to, <laughs> I'm gonna talk to the Wells Fargo team and I may just change it. I may talk to our friends, you know, Mark Common. I'm just gonna change it. <laughs> uh, Darlene, anything I didn't ask you, anything you wanted to mention before we end today? And again, I wanna have you back again, but anything that I didn't ask or anything you wanted to mention, if not, that's okay. But any, I always ask my guests anything else they wanted to add. Sure. I mean, I guess I would just say, you know, philanthropy can absolutely be a catalyst for a lasting impact for innovation, for jobs. And um, so we're just pleased that we were able to see so much success with the Open for Business Fund. I love it. And thank you again for helping small businesses on behalf of the, the many small businesses I speak. Thank you. Darlene, one more time, can you give us your full name and title and who you're with so we can hear that one more time, please? Sure. I'm Darlene Goins. I am the head of philanthropy and community impact at Wells Fargo, and I serve as the president of the Wells Fargo Foundation. I love it. My name is Ramon Ray. This has been The Rundown with Ramon with Darlene. Thanks for listening.